Welcome to Streams of Light, a ministry of the Berean SDA Church in South Bend, Indiana. After special music, we'll continue the message, Understanding the Word, by Dr. Norman Knight. Stay tuned at the end of our program for more information about the Berean SDA Church and how you can help spread the gospel in the Michiana area. and Jesus is sacrificed on Calvary. Uh, let's say that wall over there is the second coming of Jesus. That's the second coming of Jesus. That's Revelation. That's Calvary. And this is Genesis 1-1 right here. Everything in the Old Testament, the cross of Calvary, has a shadow and casts a shadow over everything in the Old Testament. Isn't that what Jesus said? The, the, the scripture, and that's what Jesus was talking about back there. There was no, no New Testament when Jesus was talking about this. He says, the scripture is they which testifies of me. So everything in the Old Testament, the gospel of the Old Testament, everything in the Old Testament, the, the cross and Jesus' shadow is over everything in the Old Testament. Did you ever read the book, The Song of Solomon? What in the world is the Song of Solomon doing in the Bible? Solomon 
one of the most majestic kings that ever reigned. He had power and authority. He falls in love with a Shulamite shepherd girl over in Lebanon. He's in Jerusalem, the city of peace. And he falls in love with this shepherd. What is this doing in the... This is a harlequin romance, isn't it? <laughs> what is it doing in the Bible? Wait, 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 wait. You got to read this. You got to read it. Let me read this for you. Uh, uh, chapter 4 of the Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon is right after Ecclesiastes, a couple of books after Proverbs. Listen to this. Listen to this. Chapter 4. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came up from the washing, whereof every one bear twins, and none is barren among them. Thy lips are like a thread of a scarlet, and thy speech is calmly. Thy temples are like a piece of a pomegranate within thy locks. Thy neck is like the Tower of David, build it for an armory whereupon there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. Thy two breasts are like two young roes that are twins uh, which feed among the lilies. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look, this is some good stuff. I got, he's, 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 he's rapping hard to this girl, isn't he? But what is this doing in the Bible? And if you only look at this as a good piece of literature, if you do not understand that Jesus on the cross casts it, shadow over everything in the Old Testament, all you will see is a nasty old man trying to pick up a girl, you know? <laughs> but if you understand what's going on here, this is why the Lord chose this to be in the Bible. King David, uh, 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 Solomon, the most majestic king that ever reigned. He had power and wealth. He lived in the palace. He was, he was king. He lived in, in Jerusalem, the city of peace. And he fell in love with this Shulamite woman in Lebanon. She was a shepherd girl. And she was in the desert. It was hot, marauding nations. It, 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 it probably didn't smell that good. She had to work hard. You know, the, the, the sun just beat down on her. And he says, come from Lebanon, my sweet. Come from that barren desert of Lebanon and come, come, come be my bride. Come leave the, the, the sweaty job that you had, the dangerous job with all those snakes. And come, come, the marauding nations, I'll protect you. Come be my bride. I, 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 I'll, 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 I'll dress you with linen in the finest silks. I'll let you share my throne. I love you. Come to the city of peace. Isn't that what Jesus says to us, we live in this ghetto called earth. <laughs> and Jesus is saying, listen, come, come from that ghetto called earth and come with me to New Jerusalem <laughs> and, I, and be my bride and I'll share my throne with you and, and, and you'll have power. Now, 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 but wait a second, but wait a second, if you leave Lebanon, you know, there are different customs in Lebanon than there is in Jerusalem. <laughs> you're going to have to eat different food if you leave Lebanon and come to Jerusalem. You're going to have to take off all that old garment. And you may have to leave your parents, your friends, that Lebanese lifestyle. And you, but you're coming to be my bride. And everything in the New Testament, the second coming of Christ, shadows everything in the New Testament. Number one, we must understand that Jesus is the basic theme of the Bible. Number two, we must be humble and teachable. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty five. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, 
Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. You've hid these truths from the wise, the learned, and the prudent, and you've revealed them to babes. You know that between zero years old and two year old, uh, 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 someone will, uh, we learn more during that period of our lives than we ever do. Uh, we're, 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 we're humble and we're teachable. Uh, I remember my oldest son, uh, we had bunk beds and, and, and he'd get on top of his bunk bed and I said, Rakeem, jump off. And, and at two years old and 18 months, he didn't care. He loved his daddy. He knew his dad. His dad he'd just jump off the bunk bed and jump in my arms. You know, he... And I taught him everything. I taught him how to tie his shoes, how to eat. And he was humble and teachable. Now if I tell Rakim, he's 6'3", if I tell him to jump off in my arms, <laughs> Daddy, are you crazy? <laughs> but, 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 but if we come with an arrogance and a pride, we're not going to learn things of the word. We have to come as babes, humble and teachable. Number three, we must let the Bible interpret itself by comparing Scripture with Scripture. Isaiah 28. Isaiah is speaking to a bunch of drunkards here. And, and, and he says to them in Isaiah 28, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and are drawn from the breast. Again, here's that imagery of being a babe and, 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 and being a child again. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Anytime the Bible repeats itself, it's for extra emphasis. And this is saying that you must allow the Bible to interpret itself. I have to explain what this means. And this is the basis for understanding the Bible. This is the basis for understanding the Bible. Turn to Revelation 12, 17. I don't think we have this on there. Revelation 12, 17. And folks, if, no, if you do not have a Bible, let us know. We're providing brand new Bibles for everyone. Anyone who needs a Bible, you just let us know. Revelation 12, 17. Let's, let's, let's study this, this text right here, okay, using the principle that we just learned. Uh, uh, precept upon precept. That means you take a concept and you build it on another concept. You take a line here and compare it with a line there. Here a little, there a little. Okay, let's read this. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. Okay, let's try to understand this. And the dragon. Now, if you leave that up to my mind, I'm thinking about some prehistoric monster, you know, a dinosaur like Puff the Magic Dragon, right? That's what I'm thinking about. But what is the dragon in Scripture? How do you know? You, you know how you know? You look, look across the page to Revelation 12, 9, and it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So as great as my imagination was to think that the dragon is some prehistoric monster, the Bible says that the dragon is who? Wait, wait, wait. Who's the dragon? How do you know? Because the Bible says so. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. And the dragon was wroth. Okay, that's an Elizabethan word. Uh, this, uh, the old uh, King James Version is written in Elizabethan English, and that's an Elizabethan word, which means enraged. Enraged. I looked up the word enraged, and it said insane anger. Anger with fury. So, so the dragon, Satan, was wroth, enraged. With the woman. Now, who's the woman? Now, I got to tell you something. I'm going to put this in your hands. I'm going to add this to the, 
to these, and I'll have this for you next time. Ezekiel 34, I have a list of seven texts. Seven texts. Ezekiel 34, the house of Israel is the Lord's. Then you go to Matthew, uh, Matthew 21, uh, God is not dependent on the house of Israel. And then you go to Romans and Galatians and Isaiah for another name for Israel, which is Zion. And you will find that the woman in Bible prophecy is the true church of God. A, 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 a virgin or a, 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 a virtuous woman in Bible scripture or just a woman in, in prophecy is the true church of God. When you read in Bible prophecy of a harlot or a whore, that's a false church of God. And I have the scriptural, uh, I, I'll, I'll have that for you uh, on Tuesday so you can reference it yourself. Because I've got to tell you something. Uh, the one thing that I, I said when I was becoming a, a, a pastor, I don't want to be a jackal. I want to know that everything that I learn is in the Bible. So if anything I say or anything any of these speakers say while you're here contradicts the Bible, that means we're a liar, the truth is not in us, and don't come back here anymore. Because everything must mesh with the Word of God. But we want to hold every single prophet and preacher to that same high standard. Okay? So, so, the, so, so the, uh, the, the dragon. Satan was wroth, enraged with the woman, the true church of God. And this dragon went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That word remnant, we borrowed in the English language from the French. It means the few that remain or the remaining few. And, 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 and a, a, a classic example is you go into a clothing store and there's a bolt of cloth there and, and you take uh, the first piece off a pattern of that cloth, off of that bolt, well, the very last piece that you take off of that bolt will look exactly like the first piece, the remnant, the remnant. As the beautiful woman left the room, the only thing that remained of her presence was the remnant of her perfume, the remnant. And how can you tell who this remnant is? Because they will keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Am I, isn't that what it says? What's the testimony of Jesus? Those who testify that Jesus is the Christ. Am I right? Sounds good, doesn't it? That's not what it means. That's not what it means. As good as that sounds, that's not what it means. Turn to Revelation 19.10. Revelation 19.10. John is on the island of Patmos. John is on the island of Patmos. And, and, and he sees he's there for Jesus Christ. He's a prisoner. And an angel comes down and talks to him. And listen to what this says. Revelation 19.10. John is speaking. And I fell at his feet to worship him. He fell at his feet to worship this angel. And he said unto me, see that that do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. The angel said, don't worship me. Listen, I'm a created being just like you are. Don't, don't fall down. Don't worship me. And, and, and then the angel says, uh, 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 he, he says, for the uh, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Wow. The Bible tells you what the testimony of Jesus is. So as good as that sound, those who testify that Jesus is the Christ sounds real good. But that's from my own imagining. <laughs> the Bible says that the testimony of Jesus is what? The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. So, so, the, so the, 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 the basis of understanding the Bible is that you must let the Bible interpret itself by comparing Scripture with Scripture. Next, we must ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, 
He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Anytime we open up the word of God, anytime in your personal studies you open up the word of God, always say a prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. Isn't that what Jesus said to do? And the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Number five, we must really want to know the truth. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 9 through 12. Uh, I'm going to start here. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Nine, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that that may be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. You really, really must want to know the truth. You must, you must study the word of God. You must come out to seminars just like this to hear the word of God. You must want to know it for yourself. Not because your mother wants you to do it or your husband or your wife or your parents, but you must really want to know the truth. Number six, we must really search for the truth. Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. Wow. You have to really search for the truth. It's not to make a, a cursory examination of the truth. And I didn't know what I was doing. When the Lord told me to be a minister, I didn't know what I was doing. I know I didn't want to be a jack leg minister. So I had to, so I left. San Diego, California, withdrew from law school, took all of my retirement out of the University of California system, that nine years worth of retirement, and came and went underground so I could learn the truth in the snow. <laughs> I'm a Californian. I came <laughs> from the beach to the snow. <laughs> I really, really wanted to know the truth. <laughs> I really was searching for the truth. <laughs> but the Lord has blessed me ever since. And I had to study and study and study. Finally, we must follow what we find and already know to be true. Let's turn to John for our last scripture for this evening. John 8. 31 and 32. John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So what this says is, once the truth is revealed to you, you must follow what you know to be true. Did you ever hear, hear of the uh, old saying, casting pearls before swine? Right? Beautiful, cultured, expensive pearls. What sense does it make to put pearls in front of, in front of swine? They're going to eat. They don't know what to do with it. Am I right about that? Am I right about that? As a parent, you know, sometimes our kids don't listen to us as much as they should, you know. <laughs> and we tell them to do something, and we tell them to do something, and they don't do it, and they ask for so this, and we give it to them, and we say, clean up your room, and they ask for this, and we give it to them, and 
And so after a while, we say, you know what? Wait a second now. Didn't I ask you to, to clean it? You didn't clean up your room? So why should I give you anything else? You're not going to clean up your room. When you get knowledge, when you get truth from the Lord, and you know in your heart it to be true, you must follow what you know to be true, and then the Lord will, will reveal more to you. Because if the Lord gives you something and you don't do anything with it, he says, why should I give you any more? You're not going to do anything with what I gave you in the first place, so why should I give you anything else? You just waste it. So Jesus says that you must use the truth. Follow in his ways when he reveals something to you. And the truth shall set you free. And if you follow these seven biblical principles, some of them are practical, some of them are spiritual. Spiritual. One of them says that you have to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. Am I right about that? That means you have to know how to pray. On Tuesday, we are going to, you're going to get such a gift on Tuesday. You're going to get such a gift on Tuesday because Tuesday we're going to go over the 10 biblical principles of prayer. Your prayer life will be richer. It will be sweeter than everything so come on Tuesday, and, and do me a favor. The, you know someone who needs prayer in their lives. You know someone who needs this information about prayer. Because they say they're praying, but their prayer life is not powerful. We're going to give you power through the word of God on Tuesday. So bring someone with you. Bring Someone with you, more than five to ten people, so you can take home this beautiful, beautiful family Bible. Bring someone with you as we unlock the Word of God. Thank you for tuning in to Streams of Light, the ministry of the Berean SDA Church in South Bend, Indiana. We pray that you are blessed by the program and that you'll tune in next week for another episode of Streams of Light. We'd like to encourage you to support Streams of Light TV ministry with a love gift of any amount. Donations can be sent to Berean SDA Church, 601 West Colfax Avenue, South Bend, Indiana, 46601. Please be sure to put Streams of Light in the remarks section of your check or money order. As always, we'd like to invite you out to our worship service each Saturday morning at 11 a.m. and our prayer, power, and praise service each Wednesday beginning at 645. Again, thank you for tuning in to Streams of Light. God bless and good night.